Hey guys, today's lesson is quite landmark in our study. Now, after equipping ourselves enough with the physics of quantum mechanics, we can, you know, go into the physical problems and solve all these quantum phenomena. The idea is, given the potential, solve the wave function and see what the wave function tells us, right? So there's a lot of physical problems. We're going to be focused on a few of them. And today, we're going to start with the free particle, right? It's easy to solve but not so easy to understand it's basically you know a particle just roaming around freely in a certain space okay we got a lot of material to cover so let's go right into it now the free particle like i said is really the potential is zero for any value of x we talked about a particle being in a certain potential but the free particle says that there's no potential right so when that happens okay we'll go into the time independent Schrodinger equation remember time independent Schrodinger equation all right get the wave function and you know multiply by the time evolutionary operator so the Schrodinger equation, okay, or the time independent Schrodinger equation, out of abuse, we just call the Schrodinger equation, is given by this over here. Now, the free particle, the potential is zero, right? So we're gonna now go into the solving part, okay? Remember all these things about the solutions, we're gonna use them all that we have learned today. So the Schrodinger equation is given by this right here. For a free particle, the potential is zero. There is no uh, potential, you know, in the position space. So basically, this gets eliminated, right? Okay, this gets eliminated over here, and we are left to solving this. Now, we want to get this Schrodinger equation into one of the forms. So what I can do is that I can bring the minus E over, right? Minus energy multiplied by the wave function, a psi over. So I get a minus E psi in terms of X, all right? And this one becomes a zero. So, so what do I have now? Well, I have that, um, and now I got this coefficient here, this coefficient here. I want to like reduce, I mean eliminate the coefficient from the second derivative so I can multiply throughout multiplied throughout by a minus 2m divided by h bar squared. Okay, can we see that? When I do that, this is gone, okay? This becomes 1, and then this over here becomes a plus, plus 2me divided by h bar squared, and multiplied by psi x. And there it is. So we start the showing the equation, all right, given the potential, and get it into one of these forms. Now, as you can see over here, this can be rewritten as the second derivative of phi of psi plus um, k squared. Okay, remember, this is positive. Now, why is positive? Because we have kind of assumed that the energy is more than zero, okay? I sorry, I did not state that condition to begin with, but then there are exceptional cases where the energy is less than zero. But right now, we just assume energy values more than zero. This becomes positive, okay, it's always positive, and you know, we can write that as a k squared, k squared psi x, because I want to write in this form, this, remember, is one of the, the forms that we have the solutions of, and the solutions are none other than psi x is equals to one coefficient, in this case, we just call it as a plus, okay, a plus, um, e to the i k x plus a minus e to the minus i k x and this is the solution to this equation over here right so the idea is this start the Schrodinger equation get the potential put it inside rearrange to one of these forms in this case we have this form noticing that it's a plus over here and when it's a plus we get i k x okay make sure that the, the k squared is positive we also want to write that k squared is equal to 2 m e divided by h bar squared. Okay, this is quite important. Now, this is what we have, you know, the solutions to the Schrodinger equation. Okay, it's a wave function. Now, I also talked about something that we can really draw all these physical interpretations from the wave function itself, okay? Not knowing yet the complete picture of the particle behavior and wave-like behavior, but from wave theory, okay, we can draw a few, um, you know, things about uh, this wave function over here. Now, this a plus and this a minus, we like to call it a parameter. Parameter, because later as we go into more confusing potentials, you know, the idea of how many parameters that we have, how many conditions we have, and how many equations that we have really dictates, you know, how are we going to solve for these parameters, right? And this K is also given a special name. It's called the wave number. Wave number, which I think I mentioned in the previous lesson. This K also corresponds to this over here, right? The wave number. And the other thing that we want to mention, all right, is that this solution here okay now this these two solutions okay because it's a second order differential equation these two will be linearly independent right but for this solution over here this represents a wave moving in this direction representing a wave moving to the right so e to the power of i k x represents a wave moving to the right and e to the power of minus i k x represents a wave moving to the left okay so remember we solve we get the wave function and really this is what we need to interpret from the function over here now, that's it. We already solved it. 
Remember, okay, time independent potential. So since we are dealing with a time independent potential, the potential is equal to zero. The potential uh, yes, it doesn't change. Remember, we got a stationary state. What's a stationary state? Stationary states are the solutions to the Schrodinger equation with time independent potentials, which is basically what we have over here. This is a so solution, okay, but you know, since we want to find the stationary state, you know, basically, you know, we just apply the time evolutionary operator. Okay, which is you know having a, the time factor over here, we basically get something like this. Okay, and then there's an omega over here. So what we want to do is that we multiply this inside these two. All right, we have the omega over here, but this omega we just you know just put it as another variable. It's equal to the energy divided by h bar. I hope you can easily see it. It's basically over here e to the i k x multiplied by e to the minus i e t divided by h bar, and we can just you know factor out the i k x. I'll take away e t divided by h bar. Um, yep, correct. Okay, and is it, so this is what we get over here. Omega, we let omega be another parameter. Now, this is what we also like to call, okay, the complete solution. Now, there's a reason why we do that. Because, like we said, you know, the time-dependent Schrodinger equation gives us the wave function at time equals to zero. And then when we apply the time evolutionary operator, we find the, you know, solution for all states. That's why it's called the wave function over here. Now, since it's a free particle, okay, and there's no potential, notice that there are no boundary conditions, all right? There's no boundary conditions. You know, when we talked about, remember the boundary conditions are the continuity equations that happen at the, at the boundaries where the motion of the particle decays, okay? So since we don't have a particle, uh, a potential, the motion of the particle doesn't decay, so there are no boundary conditions. And that would also mean that there are no restrictions on the energy and the wave number k. There's no boundary conditions. This is the complete solution. You know, the boundary conditions, they are, they, it doesn't give us, you know, the, the idea of really finding restrictions on energy and the wave number. So, you know, this is really the complete solution that we're looking for. So, it's easy to solve. Free particle, easy to solve medical, mathematically, physically. Is it easy to understand? No, it's not, right? Now, let's try to understand what this solution means. So, from De Broglie's hypothesis, all right, um, the Broglie's hypothesis really is saying that a particle has a particle-like behavior and wave-like behavior, right? This solution is really a wave, a solution that is, describes the, the wave-like behavior of the particle as given by the Broglie's hypothesis. Now, there's a way to link the two, which I think I've done it before. The Broglie's hypothesis tells us that the wave number is equal to the momentum divided by h bar. And I also talked about momentum being equal to mv, okay, and then we can somehow rearrange it to be equals to something like 2me and take the square root, right? So this is also equals to 2me divided by h bar. The square root of 2me divided h bar, where this is the energy, right? And then, uh, we can also say that since from the boundary conditions, there are no restrictions on e and k, the wave number, we can see that there are no restrictions on the energy, right? And that also leads to no restrictions on the momentum over here, right? No boundary conditions, no restrictions on the energy, that means there are no restrictions on the momentum. And because of that, we say that this has well-defined energy, well-defined energy and momentum given by these equations over here, okay? I'm just simply rearranging the, this equation over here, right? So the particle has a well-defined uh, momentum and energy. Um, what does that mean? It just says that you know it can take any values of energy and therefore momentum, and you know therefore it becomes well-defined. But there is a problem in doing so when we want to try to understand the the wave-like behavior of the particle, right? Now we need to go back to the probability density to understand what the, what this is because you know really the probability density tells us the physical interpretation of what the wave solution is. Now, if we were to go back to the probability density, okay, so basically, let me just uh, clear the board over here, right?